Hello everyone. In this video tutorial I will discuss how to use the cost analysis capabilities of Super Pro Designer and for this demonstration I will be using the insulin production example that is provided with the tool. The process itself won't be discussed but if you're interested in its details you can always study the readme file that is included with the example. This example is automatically installed with the program and you can find it in its installation directory. If you don't have a copy of Super Pro Designer, you can always download an evaluation version from our website www.intelligent.com. As a starting point, it is important to mention that this video assumes that you are familiar with the fundamentals of Super Pro Designer. If you are not familiar with the fundamentals, please make sure to watch the Super Pro Designer tutorial videos which are available on our YouTube channel through the link that you see on my screen. SuperPro Designer is a tool that performs thorough cost analysis and it estimates both the capital costs, also known as CAPEX, as well as operating costs, also known as OPEX, in detail. Furthermore, the tool generates three reports related to cost analysis. The reports are generated directly through the Reports menu and include the Economic Evaluation Report, the Cash Flow Analysis Report, and the itemized cost report. All reports can be generated in various formats and the format can be specified through the reports options menu and includes PDF, RTF and HTML among others. Also the user has the option of including charts in the various reports. Another option is the Excel custom report which also includes cost data along with other process related information. Let's now have a look at this report starting with the economic evaluation report. The format for this report is more appropriate for greenfield type of projects where the idea is that you're building a new facility to manufacture a product. The first table that appears in the report is the executive summary table which provides some high-level figures in terms of capital investment, operating cost, and profitability. Moving on to the second table, we are provided with a list of equipment required for the process with information on sizes and equipment costs. These costs are by default estimated by the tool, but the user is given the flexibility to provide their own cost data or cost function. At the end of the table, you can see the total equipment cost. The next table provides information on the capital estimates, which includes the installation, process piping, instrumentation, building, etc. These cost items are calculated using factors, some of which are equipment specific, such as the installation factor, and the rest are process specific. The user has the option of specifying own factors and the factors may also be retreated from the database of the application. Here we go from the equipment cost up to the direct capital investment and as you can see the direct fixed capital cost is about 10 times larger than the equipment cost. This is typical of biopharmaceutical processes. Next the report provides information on the various items that affect the operating cost starting with labor. If we scroll further down, we'll see information on the cost of materials. Here, the amounts are estimated by the tool and the unit cost is specified by their user or retrieved from the database. The next item displays the cost of consumables used during the process. The consumables for this example include the chromatography resins, which need to be replaced periodically, the membranes of the membrane filters and other consumables. This type of costs tend to be quite significant for biopharmaceuticals. Continuing with the report, we have environmental related costs and again the amounts are displayed and the unit cost is specified by the user. This is then followed by a utilities cost table and then we have a summary of the annual operating costs and the pie chart that displays these costs. For this example, we can see that the cost of consumables is the most important, followed by the cost of raw materials 
and then the facility dependent cost which accounts for the depreciation and maintenance of the facility. Finally, the last table of this report is a profitability analysis table that provides some information on capital investment, information on how much product is made, information on revenue, unit costs, and some profitability information. Let's now have a quick look at the two other reports. First, we have the cash flow analysis report. This report is a type of financial analysis assuming that initially we start building a plant which takes a period of time and then based on the net cash flow and the project lifetime the program calculates an internal rate of return before and after taxes and the net present value of the project at different interest rates. I have to mention here that these numbers may not be realistic for biopharmaceuticals so don't pay attention to the figures. Furthermore the report also include several other tables that provide information on loan, loan repayment, etc. The third report is the itemized cost report that provides nice breakdowns of costs per section. A section can be defined as a set of unit procedures that are grouped together with a certain relation in mind. In Super Pro Designer, you can have a large model and grouping unit procedures together can help the user organize and keep better track of particular steps in the process. As you can see in this example, the process has been divided into various sections, such as the fermentation section, primary recovery section, and some others. The different colors that you see represent the different sections of this process. Sections can also be seen through this drop-down list. Through these controls, they can be created, deleted, and renamed. If you wish to learn more about sections, you can study Chapter 8 of the Super Pro Manual, where sections and all its features are described in detail. Let's now bring up the itemized cost report. The report starts out with process-related parameters. Next, it presents a cost per process section table. For each section, you see the various cost items as a function of main product, which is depicted by MP, batch, and year. Next, we can scroll down to find a summary per section where you can compare the sections directly. Here, for example, you can see that the reaction section is the most expensive. This is followed by final purification. If we scroll down, we have another breakdown with a bar chart that displays the cost items per section. In this graph, for example, you can see how the different cost items, such as materials, facility, consumables, and others, are broken down between the different sections. For this example, the most expensive section is the reactions, and here you can see how the cost is distributed in between materials, facilities, consumables, and waste. Next, you have the cost of materials broken down in between sections. This is followed by further breakdowns where you can see the individual materials per section and per procedure. Please note that these reports are quite customizable through the options dialog, so if you do not want to see all this detail, you can specify it. Here you see a table that presents the labor cost breakdown per section. To summarize, these type of breakdowns are available if you decide to divide your process into sections. And again, that is explained in more detail in Chapter 8 of the Super Pro Designer Manual. From here on, I will demonstrate how to edit and adjust the different cost-related items. To start a cost analysis after you are done with the material balances, the first step you have to take is to specify the prices of the various materials used in your model. That can be done by going to Tasks and selecting to edit the peer components. If you would like to specify a price for one of your components, you can bring up the properties by selecting the component and then clicking on the properties button. 
through this dialog, you can then select the Economics tab, and here you can specify either a purchasing price, selling price, or a price for waste treatment or disposal. A faster way of accessing this information, however, is by using the Process Explorer. The Process Explorer can be brought up by clicking on the Process Explorer button on the menu bar. The window that appears on the right-hand side of the screen displays a number of tabs, the first being the materials where you can see a list of the materials that you're using in your model, and then the other tabs include utilities, main equipment, auxiliary equipment, labor, consumables, and storage units, if any. Through the Materials tab, you can access a component's properties by double-clicking on the component. Notice that this takes you to the same window we recently saw. For raw materials, a purchasing price should be specified, while for products, a selling price, as is the case with the insulin crystals. At this point, it is important to mention that if you maintain current cost data for your commonly used components in the materials database, it is very easy to update the cost or a specific file by going to Tasks, selecting the pure component, and then selecting Update Properties from the database. Details on using databases will be discussed in another video. Besides the cost of your components, other costs that need to be specified include the cost of utilities and labor. To specify the cost of utilities, you need to select the tab Utilities from the Process Explorer, and then select the utility you're interested in, double-click on it, and then edit the cost of the utility. As you can see, the program provides a default value, which can be changed by the user. The same applies for labor. After adding the cost of components, utilities, and other items, the next step would be to classify the various input and output streams. Stream classification can be done by selecting Tasks, and then selecting the Stream Classification option. On the bottom part of the dialog, you can see the different input streams, and by default, input streams are classified as raw materials. You can change the classification by selecting another type from the drop-down list. Furthermore, through the table on top, we can classify our output streams. Output streams can also be classified into various categories, which you can find in the drop-down list. Also, through this table, you have the option of specifying a cost associated directly to the stream, or you can also have the program retrieve the information from the component properties. All output streams should be classified into their respective types. One last thing that we need to do through this dialog is to specify the main product stream. The main product stream is used to report costs on a per unit basis. The product stream can be classified through this area, and you can also choose the flow basis as the total stream flow, which considers the total stream as the product or as a single component flow of that stream. Insulin crystals for this example. This is the minimum information the program requires in order to be able to carry out a cost calculation, which can be performed by clicking on the Perform Economic Calculations button. This concludes part one of the cost analysis tutorial. Please make sure to watch part two, where I'll finalize this tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention.